Bainy, bainy, bainy. Bionicle Inspiration. No, I'm trying to make my own intro. It didn't work. All right, welcome to the Bionicle Inspiration series. This episode is on dinosaurs because dinosaurs are freaking amazing. Who doesn't love a good dinosaur? I should really call this episode the T-Rex episode because they're all Tyrannosaurus Rexes apart from bonus mock, which I actually included in the front image because uh, reasons. For those of you who don't know what the Bionicle Inspiration series is, this is a show to show you some of the best Bionicle mocks from the community to inspire you, to help you get a few ideas for the next few things you can build, or just check out some really cool techniques and things that other people have done, get a little bit of a behind the scenes look at the Bionicle mocks of the community. So, let's have a wee look, shall we? Let's begin, eh? All right, first mock we've got, I'm not gonna do an accent for the whole episode. <laughs> first mock we've got is called Tracy the Cyber Rex by LLR99. Love this mock. Very, very cool. One thing that immediately grabbed me and made me go, okay, this is this, this went from a cool mock to a really friggin' cool mock. One, it has a poseable jaw, which is great. But what I was specifically talking about, he's used a cannon piece there. You can see it there just in between the teeth, uh, which I'm sure you could totally load a cannon into that. And then you have a giant robot dinosaur that can shoot lasers out of its mouth. Nothing is cooler than that. So <laughs> put shooting cannons inside the mouths of T-Rexes, my fellow ladies and gentlemen. What a great idea. Now, what I love about this is I know that I probably speak for some of you and some of you I probably don't speak for, but I know I have a bunch of parts specifically in silver just sitting in drawers, not being used. And what I love about this is the amount of random silver parts that this has on it and it forms one of the coolest looking dinosaur shapes and mouths ever looks fantastic so why not do that why not get all of the part that you just do not use you never ever use or has just been sitting there for years and go i'm gonna build a big mock with it because i can't tell you how fun it is to just sit down for like a solid nice period of time and just build something big because it's so much fun and it's so easy to dedicate time to and i actually find building on a bigger scale like that can actually be a lot easier because you're able to use parts in better ways. Like, for example, look at the Evoki or the Mask of Light in the speckle gold color there that he's used on the top there. How nicely does that flow and look like the shape of a dinosaur nose? It fits so nicely in with all those parts. It's so compact and nice. It just looks great. And I think that's because you're able to build on such a bigger scale. You know, like, I have a lot of people who say, I've had this conversation before at conventions, where people go, what's harder to build, a big mock or a really small mock? I actually reckon it's harder to build smaller mocks because you have to compact so much detail into such a tiny space and it can actually be a little bit more difficult sometimes. Whereas if you have a big mock, you can use parts in brand new different ways that you just simply cannot on a smaller mock. And so I actually reckon the only barrier with building a big mock is having the amount of parts to do so. So I definitely recommend doing that. Using some of the parts you just have lying around and doing that. Because like looking at the sort of upper leg there on the dinosaur, he's used one of those new CCBS uh, Bionicle G2 Onua Claw parts which again, has some beautiful shaping and fits that leg design very nicely. So that's awesome. Or even stuff like that, using the uh, Surge mask there as a knee or some of these other masks there as sort of a, an ankle Achilles heel, I guess. Looks fantastic. So some very cool ways to use parts on a bigger mock that I think is just fantastic and makes this mock look amazing. So yeah, great work, Mr. LLR99. Let's move on to the next mock, which is called CMT Rex by Edo Okononen. Oh, no, wait, Ayo Okononen. I do know how to pronounce that. Haha. <laughs> so what I love about this is I often talk about how using system in a Bionicle mock can be really cool and can enhance stuff, but this takes that to a different level. So this mock is pretty much like 50-50 roughly, system and Bionicle. And it's cool because it kind of looks like all of the system is the green. It's the area that would actually be the organic dinosaur. And then all the gray is all hero factory parts, to a degree, like some of the toes and the arms are using a lot more system, but it at least fits that texture very nicely and well. And I think that's really cool because it very much gives the sense that this is an organic dinosaur with sort of like metallic armor on top of it. And that looks awesome. And it has a really cool dynamic that you don't see too often in mocks. So that's a really great way to use system uh, in a Bionicle mock. So excellent work, Ayo. One thing that I think is very noteworthy in this mock is the top sort of spikes on the back here. It's one big Duplo part. Now, this build was built for a competition called Iron Builder on Flickr. For those of you who don't know, Iron Builder is a competition held by AFOLs that basically two mockists or AFOLs, whatever you want to call them, are picked and they're given a seed part. And essentially what that means is they're given a random part that's Lego that maybe is a bit more difficult to use or is just, you know, some random part. And they go, okay, build as many mocks as you can that use that part in a creative way. And so if you ever need to have a really good look at uh, really good nice part usages, this contest is just an example of that. 
So they had to use this really weird grass Duplo piece in heaps of different ways. And some of the stuff that Pate has done, Pate or Ao, he, he's either Ao Okononen or Pate Kitongu. I'm not sure if his name changes too much. Currently, it's Ao Okononen. So there you go. But he's used these grass parts on this or on this, all sorts of different things in some very creative ways. One of my favorites is he did this sort of hospital bed thing where he's actually flipped that part on its side and used the back part kind of looking like the whole boop, boop thing from, a you know, tracking someone's heart. And that, in my opinion, is genius. It looks fantastic. So what a, what a great concept to take one part and see how many times in different ways you can use it. Why not do that challenge yourself? Why not pick one random part that you maybe have heaps of lying around and see if you can build like five mocks using just that, well, not just that one part, using that part in a creative way uh, and seeing what you can do. And definitely go on Flickr and just search up Iron Builder in the group section. You'll see some amazing stuff where they've used one particular part in like heaps of different mocks. Uh, and that'll help you get inspired because Iron Builder is such a cool contest. Uh, and maybe you can challenge one of your friends to do that. You know, pick a, pick a few Bionicle parts, see what you can do. Great idea. Going back to the mock here, really, really like that foot design using those uh, sort of system parts there to create a sort of very nice looking claw design for the little toes on the mock. Also, they're poseable. Really, really cool. Nothing better than poseable toes. So yeah, really is just a fantastic mock by uh, AO there. So fantastic work. Some very clever concepts. Great to see you using parts in such genius and creative ways. Second last mock, because bonus mock, spoilers, uh, we have today is called Lego Dinosaur by Noble Terry. Love this design. Very adorable. Very cute. Got tiny, tiny little arms there that he's used because uh, nothing's funnier than seeing all the jokes of T-Rexes with little tiny hands. So very cool to see that in a mock. Very, very cute. Love that. Also really cool to see a Speedor's head uh, from the old Chima, you know, pullback racer, Beyblade style things. That was one of the heads on the front of the Speedor bike. So really cool to actually use the printing on that, which might make it a little bit more difficult to use in other mocks, but actually using that printing to your advantage uh, and having it actually be the head of a dinosaur looks fantastic. And kind of basing the whole build around that kind of leads it into this sort of scale, which is cool because always, you know, we, we've seen two sort of decently sized dinosaurs so far. So it's nice to see them on the smaller side because this still looks fantastic. It's still very well built for being such a small mock. Wouldn't take too much time, doesn't take too many parts. So maybe you yourself can do that and, you know, build a really quick, fun mock that is a really nice end result, much like this mock. What I really like as well is this back here uses pretty much just the Liwa Mata hand there, and sort of makes up the majority of the spine of this mock. And one, it looks really cool, does sort of give the overall shape that a T-Rex normally has, and kind of implies a bit of, like, spikes. But also, using that one part takes up so much of the back design there, is very clever in my opinion, because one, you get a really cool part use out of it, and two, it leads way to so much of the shape of the mock. And you don't have to use too many parts, because that one part is taking up so much of the mock. So I think that's very, very clever doing that. So it's interesting to kind of play it smart, I guess, while you're mocking. See if you can just use one or two parts to take up an entire section of the body. Because, hey, if you can do something easy or the lazy way, do it. That's way better than overcomplicating it. So yeah, give that a go. Also really great use of the Quasar Spike there on the tail. Really, really nice. Looks great. Flows very nicely with everything. Also really cool to see some nice color blocking, just solely having that sort of stripe of lime on the top and then the bottom all being silver. Looks great, really leads way to how an actual dinosaur probably would have looked like. So excellent work on Noble Teddy. The final mark, which is the bonus mark that we have for today, is by Felix van Leeuwen, and is called Tim and Burr. Adorable, creative, fun little mocks. Love these guys. They're so adorable and so cute. I'm going to read the little description that's in the description on Flickr. So Felix said, My awesome little desk buddies built in a fit of boredom mixed with a dash of creativity. Dino parts are awesome. I rest my case. He's right. <laughs> I used to have these dinosaur sets when they came out as a kid. They were very fun to play with, but now as an AFOL, those parts are very difficult to use. I can never find a use for them. I don't even know where they are, but I still, I still know I have some. It's really cool to just use some of those parts that are so ridiculous and hard to use and just build a fun, cute little mock like this. And like he said, they sit on his desk. They're his little buddies on his desk. So how cool is that to build something like that? He probably built these in like five minutes, but he's got a really awesome, cute result in the end. So yeah, do that. Go use some of the harder parts that you have. Build a cute little adorable fun mock like this that will take like two minutes and will just be fun to do. Put big googly eyes on it, you know, flip a mask or something, make it look like hair. I challenge you, make a mock as derpy as you can look. Send it my way. I'd love to see it. Uh, and then they can be a little desk buddy. Yeah, and you can use some really annoying, hard-to-use parts. 
Great idea. Great way to do it. Fun, quick, easy. And that's about it from today's episode. If you want to see more of these mocks, then be sure to check the links in the description because that is where you're going to find them. Also in the links in the description are links to my social media, my Instagram, my Facebook, my YouTube. You're already on my YouTube. My mock pages. Uh, and there's another one. I can't remember. You'll have to check it out. And there you can send me a message and you can suggest future themes or future mocks that you want to see on this episode, whether they're yours or a friend's, and I will include them. I'll put them in my backlog, and then when I decide, what episode do I want to make today? I'll look through that, and I'll be like, oh, what a great idea for a theme. Oh, that mark will fit that. Perfect. So, uh, yeah, awesome. Otherwise, thanks very much for watching. Let me know if you got inspired by this episode. Show me the things that you built as a result. I'd love to see them. I'll happily drop a comment. And that's about it. Yeah. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you in the next episode. Yeah.